Happy lunch hour, guys. Well, that didn't take long, now did it? Not that it should come as a big surprise to anybody. We talked about it on the live stream last night, and psh, Christ, that right away. So, if you watched Biden's short speech, I guess it was about nine minutes, I watched it last night, about uh, the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. It should come as no surprise to you that it was shallow, hollow, had no compassion in it whatsoever, and was strictly a political talking point speech. That was it. All right. Of course, all the other politicians, leftists, are coming out today and jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, we've got to do something about this. And as I said yesterday on the live stream, it still has not been determined if the school was even an intended target of this kid, okay? Because the reason he was there was he had murdered his grandmother earlier this morning, and or earlier in the morning, and there was a bolo out for his truck. The cops found him on the road, started chasing him. It turned into a high-pursuit chase or high-speed chase, and he eventually crashed into the school. Now, like I said last night, he could have crashed into a gas station. He could have crashed into a strip mall. Who knows? We do not know and may never know whether or not the school was where he was going. He was literally shooting anybody that was in his way. He was trying to make an escape. That was it. Okay. But, of course, we had to have all the politicians from the top down turn this into a political statement, not a compassionate deal. All right. And I said this last night, and of course it came to fruition right away. Instantly, we've got to have a gun control. We've got to have an assault weapons ban, and I'm going to blow every hole in the world I can in all of this. All right. So let's start with Potato Joe and what he said yesterday. And it was amazing how he pulls up scripture. <laughs> Dude, you you wouldn't know the Bible if it hit you in the head. I mean, the only thing it's good for in your house is putting it underneath a bed to keep the damn leg from being broken. All right. But this was the line in the speech by Biden last night that was just completely BS. All right. He says, when we, he goes, I spent my entire career, or I spent my career as a senator and as vice president working to pass common sense gun laws. We have a common sense gun law. It's called the Second Amendment. We can't and won't prevent every tragedy. This is true. You're in the White House. But we know they work and have a positive impact. When, when we passed the assault weapons ban, mass shootings went down. When the law expired, mass shootings tripled. This has been debunked over and over and over again. When they passed the assault weapons ban, it had no effect whatsoever on shootings. And when it expired, it had no effect whatever on, it, on shootings. Every analyst that's been out there says the numbers moved minusculely and that would be within the margin of error. Okay, So there was the first lie. Next line in his speech. The idea that an 18-year-old kid can walk into a gun store and buy two assault weapons is wrong. Okay, Joe, what age would you prefer it be? Okay, you know, at 16 in some states, you get a driver's license. Not 15, not in 364 days, 16. At 18, you're allowed to vote. Not 17 in 364 days. These are cutoffs that have been made. You want to make it 21? You want to make it 25? You want to make it 72? I don't care, okay? But the idea that an 18-year-old kid can walk into a gun store, that's the law, okay? Technically, any, according to the Constitution, anybody should. There shouldn't even be an age limit. But the law says an 18-year-old kid can walk into a gun store and buy a gun. The law also says at 18 years old, you can be drafted into the military, or volunteer to join the military. Guess what they carry? Guns. Okay? So yes, 
at 18 years old, you're considered an adult. You know, you can drive, you can vote, you can buy a gun. You can't drink, but, you know, hey, you know, there's a problem in itself. I'm not even going to get into that. But he went on and said, buy two assault weapons. Hey, Joe, definition of assault weapon is what the military uses. I want to enlighten you probably for the 84 billionth time. The military does not use AR-15s. An AR-15 is a semi-automatic weapon. An assault, an assault weapon is an automatic weapon. Okay? An AR-15 has two settings, safe and fire. There is no auto or on the new ones, the three-shot burst. Okay, Sorry, not an assault weapon. He went in and bought a rifle. And I'm sorry, it's a, oh, it's a scary black rifle. Big freaking deal. Okay. So then the cackling hen comes up, Kamala Harris, right? And of course, she's out calling for gun control as well. Her quote, enough is enough. As a nation, we have to have the courage to take action and understand the nexus between what makes for responsible and sensible public policy to entrust something like this never happens again. Miss Harris, let me ask you a question. Why is it that the Democrats feign all sorts of tears over and over and over again when a kid is shot? Oh, this could never happen again. And Trust me, I don't want to see it ever happen again either, so don't even think I'm going that direction. My question is this. Why, when you have a shooting in school, like yesterday, you had a bunch of kids that were seven and nine years old, why is that a tragedy? Yet, when last year there were 890,000 abortions performed in the United States, that's not... Explain that to me. Those are kids, too. All right? Why, when so far this year there have been 223 people in Chicago killed, a lot of them teenagers, kids, why isn't that a tragedy? Please answer me these questions. Where do these gun crimes happen? Primarily, what are some of the biggest problems, problem cities in the country with gun crimes? Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit. What do those have in common? Hmm, let's take a look at the leadership in that little letter in parentheses after their name. Okay. Let's take a look at the states that uh, lead in abortions. Number one and number two on a per capita basis, New Jersey's number one, New York's number two. What do those two states have in common? Yeah, that same little letter in parentheses after their name. The leftists, the Communist Party, had all sorts of uproar a couple of weeks ago with the leak from the Supreme Court that inevitably came from a leftist. And they were all worried that they were going to be prohibited from killing kids anymore. But then we get an issue like this yesterday. Tragedy. And they're completely in an uproar about being able to kill kids. Do as I say, not as I do. huh? Why is it that life only becomes important when you're seven, is that the age? You have an age to buy a gun, to buy a vote, to vote, to drink a beer, to drive a car, whatever it is. is. Are you saying that the age to be important in life is seven? Oh, you want to do abortions up to a week after birth? That's murder. Okay, it's infanticide is what it's called. Okay, so is it seven days that that's when you're now a person? to use your definition, because God knows we couldn't say boy or girl. The hypocrisy is insane. What, and, and this, I, I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know about this. 
the criminals are not going to go, oh, okay, we'll turn our guns in. The only thing that you are going to do with any of this gun control crap is prevent honest citizens from protecting themselves. Here's a bigger question I have for the administration, and the previous one, and the previous one, and the previous one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why is it that you can't get near an airport, let alone to the gates, with a gun? You can't get near a courthouse or any federal building without a gun or with a gun. I mean, I can't even walk into the little city hall here in BFE, Tennessee, without going through a metal detector and a cop sitting right there. You're so worried about your indoctrination centers, you don't want to protect them. There's a lot of schools that have electronic access. You have to push a button and somebody in the main office will talk to you over a speaker and say, what are you here for? And they will buzz you in. This isn't anything new. Almost 20 years ago, when my daughter was little, kindergarten, first, second grade, going to school in the outskirts of Fort Wayne, Indiana, not exactly talking about a hopper metropolis here, and her school, to go pick her up, I had to be buzzed in, and they would bring her from her classroom to me. I was only allowed to go so far in school. The whole the schools were locked down. And this was on a good side of town, don't get me wrong. It wasn't, you know, a crime-ridden area. Uh, for those that you guys that live up there, it was Carol, the Carroll School District. But why won't you spend the money to do something like that? Because, hell, in your latest 40, or the, the last uh, COVID relief bill, one of the things that you spent money on was sending money to one of these U.S. territories to teach people how to make aboriginal canoes. Okay, with a couple of million dollars worth there. Let's stop sending money to the Kennedy Center. Let's stop spending money on transgender studies. And let's start spending money on keeping our kids safe. You want gun control? How about doing something like that rather than running your mouth? Because you ain't taking away my First Amendment rights, my Second Amendment rights, my Fourth Amendment rights. And even though you have idiots out there like Michael Moore today saying the Second Amendment needs to be repealed. I have a little thing to enlighten you on there, Mr. Moore. Obviously, you don't have squat. The first ten amendments are called the Bill of Rights. They can't be repealed. You can try to change them, but you'll have a fight on your hands. Pingo out.